everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am making this video because I don't think that I'll be able to see the new release movie today, and so uh, in light of that, I think that I'll make this the other video that I was supposed to do today, so I guess today is an all Goosebumps affair. And I am now going to review the Goosebumps Season 1, hopefully the only season, uh, overall. You know, looking at it from the big picture point of view. And this is going to be spoilers galore, and it's just going to be a... It's going to be a fun time, because I have a lot to say. And as a, as a real Goosebumps fan... At like a lot of other people who watch this show, uh, I was excited to possibly see like adaptations of the books that were you know maybe different and maybe fun and new and interesting, or maybe sequels to stories that we've already seen before. Like uh, I don't know, like if they did a finally did a sequel to Cuckoo Clock of Doom where he gets a sister back. Oh no, we can't do that. We have to do what they did here and I don't even I don't even really want to talk about it again because it's just it's so bad. It it, it was so bad this show. It it's probably one of the worst shows that I've ever seen. It really is like it has no big vi it, it has there the the vision for this show is non existent. Because on one hand it's trying to do Goosebumps, which it's not really trying at all. Because it, it doesn't even really adapt the books. It kind of pretends like the books aren't as good as what the people on the show write. Uh, so the people who write the show, they kind of think they're better than R.L. Stein. And then they created a character named Mr. Brat, who's like this teacher, uh, the, the new English teacher. And they make that he's a bad writer so that they can also kind of brag that they're better writers than him, too. And so, you know, part of the show is, like, the writers showing off and saying, look, we're way better writers than R.L. Stein or the people who wrote the original show or uh, Mr. Brat. You know, we're really good writers. And then also, another aspect of the show, which was a very bizarre choice, was to make this show like a and I hesitate to use the word, but to make it a woke Gen Z show where you'd have a bunch of uh, Gen Z lines like, oh, I thought that this was a cashless society. And then they see a picture of Bill Clinton later on in the season, and this girl says, oh, look, that's Hillary's husband. You know, nobody would ever say that ever. Like, they would say, oh, look, that's Bill Clinton. Oh, look. They wouldn't say that that's Hillary's husband. It's basically like like saying that she's more important than him because she's a woman and he's a man. And, you know, lots of stuff like that on the show. They, ha they have this gay main character named James. And he's not, like, gay in, like, a realistic way where he's just, like, a normal, everyday person. He's another one of those, like, old-fashioned flamboyant stereotypes who's really obnoxious and gross makes gross comments all the time he wears pearls to school which no kid wears pearls to school that's just a complete and utter uh, lie and then uh he, he's just a terrible character and all the the main characters of this show are terrible like gen z stereotypes and not only that, so that also another aspect is the teenage crap. They have teenage romance. They have all these YA stories, like they're having angst about college and all this crap. But then they have the parents, and the parents have their own little story that's basically a ripoff of Nightmare on Elm Street, where the parents accidentally killed this kid named Harold, and then... Uh, years later, Harold comes back to take revenge on their kids. That's the story of this show, is a ripoff of Nightmare on Elm Street. 
Uh, so that's another aspect of the show. And it's like, you think, you're sitting there thinking, like, what is this show supposed to be? Is it supposed to be Goosebumps? Is it supposed to be a teenage YA, like, drama? Is it supposed to be uh, Nightmare on Elm Street? Like, what is this supposed to be? Because it's not doing any of these things right, and it's not doing any of these things well. It's just doing all of them at once and doing a really poor job at it. And uh, this is some of the worst writing I've ever seen, honestly. Like, from beginning to end, you start off, say cheese and die. And they don't even do the say cheese and die story until, like, the episode has, like, 15 minutes left in the episode. So it's almost like an afterthought of, like, oh, I guess we have to do that since we called the episode Say Cheese and Die. And they did a terrible job. They basically ripped off another Goosebumps episode, which was never a book. It was only an episode. And it was the second episode in the Carlsville trilogy where the character is playing a sport and he's in Carlsville and the game turns evil, it turns haunted, it's really goofy and fun, and and, and kind of scary too, uh, if you're a little kid, I guess. And uh, they do the same thing, they rip that off. So, then in the second one, you get the haunted mask, but not the real haunted mask, you get, I would say it's, it's almost like a, a rape of the original story, like they really raped that book. They ruined everything about it. They took a character in Carly Beth's mom, one of the most beloved characters of the Goosebumps series, and they turned her into a C-U-N-T. And she is like the worst mom in television history, almost. Uh, there's one point in the finale where Carly Beth, not Carly Beth, I mean, uh, she says... My mom said it's nice to see me today, or nice to see you today. She's never said that to me before, and so that's how I knew it wasn't her. And it's like, oh, God, you, you this character who's supposed to be, like, such a nice person, she's supposed to be, like, this, like, amazing figure of of goodness in the show, you turned her into, like, an absolute C-U-N-T and, like, I don't know why they did that. And, and it, it's almost like they got off on just changing everything from the books and ruining everything and making everything, like, really bad and really different to the point of where, like, they're not even good stories either. Like, <laughs> this, for, this fucking, the Cuckoo Clock of Doom one, especially, like, the girly boy, he's at this party and he knocks into the clock, and that's how the events start. Like, he doesn't even, like, turn the head backwards on purpose, which makes a lot of sense because, you know, you turn back the head of the cuckoo, it takes you back in time. Oh, it's almost like R.L. Stein wrote that for a reason. Oh, but no, instead, let's just have the character bump into the clock and that'll make the sequence of events start. And by him traveling back in time over and over and kind of ripping off Groundhog Day 2, which I don't know how that was possible because the original Goosebumps Cuckoo Clock of Doom is nothing like Groundhog Day at all. Uh, <laughs> in fact, especially in the book, in the book... You know, he's he's decreasing in age each time he's traveling in time. Uh, he's going to a new memory. And basically in the book what happens is he tries to escape, but like every time he tries something, something bad happens and he remembers, oh shit, this is back when this bad thing happened. Oh shit. And so like he fails over and over again. Uh, but in this, it's it, they go through it really fast, and then all of a sudden he has doppelgangers. And that kind of just felt like a gimmicky thing, uh, because they were all kind of... It, it, it was really bad. And then they got to go eat worms, 
where they took that story, they took that title literally, and they made a story that's nothing like the story in the original book, as usual. And this is kind of where the show was at the halfway point. And halfway through the show, I was like, how can this show get any worse? Because already at this point, they ruined one, two, three, four books in the series. They completely ruined them. They they made them into something that they're not. Uh, they made episodes that aren't any good, that are lame. Uh, they sucked all the color out of the show. Uh, so it's like an ugly, washed out color palette. They made these main characters really unlikable and annoying and awful to where I couldn't care less if any of them just suddenly, uh, you know, got, uh, you know, effed up by Slappy or something, you know. So, like, I was like, how can the show get any worse? Well, then they slowed down the show so that they could tell the origin story of Harold Biddle, uh, the Freddy Krueger Jr. character, and his origin story sucked. They didn't even really explain it at all. They had, like, this haunted scrapbook. And then in the next episode, they uh, bring in Slappy, and then they finally kind of explain what happened. Uh, so basically, that whole episode before that was kind of a waste of time. And then in the episode after that, they're trapped inside the house because they're trapped inside the haunted scrapbook. And so one of the only original elements of this season was the haunted scrapbook. So that was the best that these supposedly amazing writers could come up with is like a haunted scrapbook that, you know, you could draw the pictures and it would make the things come true. Uh, so, which is really weird because it's like, you, you look at Harold and <laughs> you just think like, if I were Harold, what would I do? Well, first off, I bring myself back to life since apparently in the show, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience, as the, the pitch meeting guy would say. It's, it's super easy to just bring people back to life. You can just do it all the time if you have a special book. And so... Uh, first thing that I would have done was bring myself back to life. Second thing I would do is uh, get that one girl's mother to be with me. You know, that one girl that Harold had a crush on? She got married to this guy who then cheated on her uh, later in life, uh, Margot's mother. And so all Harold really had to do was just draw him with her going on a date. And it's like, no, instead of doing that stuff like a normal person would do, what does Harold do with the scrapbook? He traps teenagers into the house and also the English teacher. And uh, he just, he wants to get Slappy back. You know, it's all about Slappy, apparently. And that's where the show really gets bad. Because it was actually a lot better when it was about the Herald story, at least because it felt like, you know, that was the, the story that they wanted to do. But then all of a sudden, everything has to be about Slappy because in Goosebumps, as we know, in modern Goosebumps, everything is always about Slappy. Everything, you know, uh, because Slappy is all that Goosebumps is about. You know, forget about Monster Blood, forget about The Haunted Mask, or Welcome to Dead House, or Terror Tower, or Stay Out of the Basement. None of those things matter. The only Goosebumps thing that matters is Slappy. And so Slappy has to be the center of everything, like it's a Slappy World show. And I gotta say, like, I miss the days where Curly the Skeleton was the mascot for Goosebumps because Curly the Skeleton was actually a good character uh, because, you know, he wasn't a character and they had a lot of room to grow, whereas Slappy has become so oversaturated and, and just done so many times. Uh, his origin story has been done over and over and over again, and it's been fucked up over and over and over again. 
I'm really sick of Slappy, and I really wish that we could get Curly the Skeleton instead, because he's a lot better of a mascot anyway. Like, Slappy isn't a mascot. Like, that's not, like, he, he's just, he's not a mascot at all. He is a, a character. Like, I would say that, like, he is, like, the leading character in the Goosebumps series, because people love him so much, but he he is not the mascot of the brand. Curly the Skeleton is. And then also, I forgot to mention, but this is yet another Goosebumps show that really uh, did Mr. Wood dirty. And it really seems like people who make Goosebumps, they have like some sort of a vendetta against Mr. Wood, uh, probably because he was the better character than Slappy, uh, in the original book, like, to the point of where in the finale of this season, uh, which they call Welcome to Horrorland for some reason, they, you know, falsely advertise that it's Welcome to Horrorland, uh, they take Mr. Wood's origin story, and they, they give it to Slappy, and they say, no, he, that guy, that the puppet maker guy, he never made Mr. Wood. He only ever made Slappy. So that's how much the show hates Mr. Wood, is that they took Mr. Wood's origin story and they gave it to Slappy instead. And they took Mr. Wood out of the picture completely. And it's like, wow, this show really doesn't like the books that they paid all this money to get the rights for, do they? Like, they really don't like the, <laughs> these books that they're supposedly adapting and they're supposedly making a Goosebumps show for Goosebumps fans. Uh, no, it's just like, they think they're better, they think that their writing is better, so they're not going to do the books. They're not going to do anything that even relates to the books. They're just going to do their own thing because they know that people will still pretend like it's good, uh, as we've seen. I mean, there was somebody, if you guys can believe this, there was someone who commented and said, how do you know that the only way that Slappy can be brought back to life is that by reading the magic words? I mean... <laughs> That's his whole character, Slappy, is being brought to life using magic words. And somebody had the nerve to, to question that and say, well, how do you know that that's the only way he can be brought back to life? I mean, that is just fucking retarded. Uh, so a lot of stuff like that. And so then th this is where the show gets really bad. Because Harold gets taken off the show, which is really bad because, you know, that was the whole story of this season. Uh, so they kind of fucked that up, too. Uh, you know, if you want to have Slappy as the villain, you can put him as the villain in season two. Uh, after you're done with the Harold story in season one. Uh, you don't just have, like, a surprise villain in Slappy. And really what it was to me was it felt like desperation because they knew that the fans... We're seeing this episode. I mean, look at this. You got this episode called You Can't Scare Me. And the episode doesn't have anything to do with You Can't Scare Me at all. The book. So they knew that the fans saw that. And they were like, WTF. So what did they do? <laughs> they brought in Slappy. Is the surprise villain. Uh, to bait fans and to make them go like, ooh, I like Slappy, I like all this stuff. Uh, I'm just going to pretend like all this stuff is good because Slappy's in it. Ooh! And then they call another episode Night of the Living Dummy 2. It has nothing to do with Night of the Living Dummy 2 at all in any way, shape, or form. They have more of the... the and they and th then also, in the second half of the season they introduce a love triangle. <laughs> like, as if there hasn't been enough, like, stupid teenage drama crap that nobody asked for. Uh, they have Margot and then Lucas and Isaiah in a love triangle together. And uh, Isaiah, he is this jock who has been treating Margot like a piece of shit for years uh, because... 
he he doesn't want to look like he would date that kind of a person, you know. So he's basically like a male Cordelia. If you if you guys have ever seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer and you remember Cordelia, the bully girl who didn't want to date Xander because she didn't want her friends to think less of her, you know, that's basically what Isaiah is. He's a terrible person. And uh Margo is a terrible person too though. So, you know, they're both really terrible. I mean, especially after what she does in the finale where she's like, you're a terrible person and I want you to come back to life so you can keep on breaking my heart and, and abusing me. Uh, <laughs> it's really bad. And then uh, Lucas, he is, he is like kind of like the underdog of the season. He, he was a bully at first, but then all of a sudden he stopped being a bully. And then he was really sad about his dad dying and he had a really good natural romance with Margot. Uh, they fit really well together. They had a lot of chemistry as actors, which Isaiah and Margot did not at all have chemistry. Uh, so yeah, there's a love triangle uh, in a Goosebumps show. It's like, you know, when we were watching the shitty movie that, that you know, sucked you-know-what, uh, that first movie, I would say, is probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Uh, the second one I actually liked, though. Uh, I would highly recommend the second Goosebumps movie. Because it, it's it's like a fun, like, slappy world book put into a movie. Uh, but in the first movie, it's like, what were what was everyone saying? Oh, where's the love triangle? I was really missing a love triangle in Goosebumps. That's just exactly what I wanted, was to see, like, two guys and a girl, and the girl has to choose. It's like, oh, that's just, oh my god, that's so amazing. That's exactly what we needed in Goosebumps. Not. So finally, they get to what I think was, like, kind of one of the better episodes of the season just because it had Justin Long in it for more than like five minutes you know Justin Long I think that he was done really dirty in the show and I would also say let's take a moment to really appreciate some of the good actors on the show who were done dirty Justin Long he is one of my favorite actors if I were to be trapped on a desert island with two actors of my choice, I would choose Justin Long and uh, and somebody else, pro pro probably Winona Ryder, probably, but I'm not like 100%, but probably uh, Winona Ryder, for sure. Uh, because Justin Long, he just seems like the nicest person. He, he's, he's a really, really good actor. He's really likable. And uh, he was totally done dirty in this show. Uh, he He's kind of not even there until the second half of the show. And then he finally comes in. And in this episode, he's in almost the whole thing in this Night of the Living Dummy 2. And he does such a good job acting. Like, there was a moment earlier on in the season where he was... Uh, Harold possessing him and he was uh, crying and he was talking about like you know wait a second you kids didn't understand the story I was telling you these uh, your parents bullied me like he did such a, an amazing job I was like god they wasted this this amazing actor in this show like he, he is he is so good like I just wish he was in a good goosebumps show or movie because he he's just amazing. And then also I would say the guy from the office who plays the counselor at the school, he's pretty good and I felt bad for him because he actually had some of the funnier lines of the season. Uh he he was more of like the comedic side character and uh so he he was pretty good but it's too bad that he got wasted in this trash show. And then also, uh, Nora, she's a good actress. Uh, she was the mom in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I didn't even recognize her, uh, but she is also a good actress. 
and she was also wasted on the show. And in terms of the kids, uh, Lucas was a fantastic actor. I really thought that he did a great job in, in his episode, Go Eat Worms. And I felt like it's too bad that he wasn't in a good Goosebump show. <coughs> and lastly, uh, Carly Beth, well, not Carly Beth, I felt like that she was my personal favorite out of the kids group because she was really the best actor there. Uh, she did a great job with her episode, even though it was terrible. It was abysmal. It was garbage. It was trash. It was shit. It was sludge. It was dirt. It was sewer liquids. It was just everything wrong with Goosebumps. But she did a great job. It's too bad she didn't get a good script. Another thing of like why this show sucks is because this is yet another Goosebumps adaptation where they purposefully make it not take place in Ohio. You know, Arl Stein was from Ohio. All of his Goosebumps books, his Fear Street books, for the most part, they are set in Ohio. They're supposed to be in Ohio. It is an Ohio series. You know, there are so many, like, shows and movies where they're supposed to take place in Ohio, and they say, fuck that. Like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, that's supposed to take place in Ohio. Uh, but they shoot it in California, and they make it in California. Uh, he Heathers. Heathers, one of my all-time favorite movies. Supposed to take place in Ohio, but uh, they shoot it in California. And they just keep on doing that. Like the first Goosebumps movie, it takes place in Delaware. Madison, Del Delaware. Why the fuck would it be there? Uh, and then the second Goosebumps movie. Oh, that takes place in New York. Why the hell would it take place in New York? And if that's not bad enough, the Fear Street series, the, the Lesbian Agenda Fear Street series, takes place in California where they pretend like California was one of the original colonies. Uh, that, that was really embarrassing. Uh, and just proof that that person who made that series had no business uh, making that series. Well, this show, it takes place in, like, Washington or Oregon or something. Uh, like it, and, and they suck all the color out. So it's just, it is not goosebumps at all. Uh, it does not look like Ohio at all. At the very least, for the show, for the 90s show, they at least made it look like it took place in Ohio sometimes. You know, like a lot of the houses, like the, the one from Cuckoo Clock of Doom, they really looked like they were in Ohio, even though they were in Canada. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, but in this, it's like there's no attempt, once again, to make a Goosebump show that's set in Ohio. And I gotta be honest, like, I am sick and tired of, like, Goosebump shows not taking place in Ohio. Like, I don't like Ohio, I hate Ohio, uh, but that's where Goosebumps is supposed to be. Why are you not having it be in Ohio? Like, <laughs> they're not even saying that it's in Ohio. Like, they're n they can't even do that. Like, they have to make it take place somewhere else so that they can be different and they can be interesting. But they're not interesting at all. So then they bring Slappy back to life as a human being. Uh, and, and that's all the story about massaging the writer's egos. The whole thing about Mr. Brat is not a good writer, so he needs Slappy to help him. And Slappy is kind of like the writers of the show. Uh, and he, apparently in this universe, Slappy is a human being. He's never been a human being before, except for, I think, like one time uh, in all of Goosebumps canon. And I think it's one of the books that I haven't read yet. Uh, but in all the modern books and all the recent books, he is not a human being at all. Uh, he is a dummy. He's a magical dummy. 
Uh, he, you know, like he's not, he was never a human being at any point. Uh, but in this show, they wanted to make him a human being so that they could once again slow down the show so that they could tell another origin story. So in this season, they have about one, two, three, four, four episodes out of ten where they slow down the non-existent story to tell the origin story of the villain character or of the of the main character. Because they in the episode five, they did Harold, Harold's origin, kind of. And then episode six, they did the magician's origin, and they finished up Harold's. So that's two. And then in episode nine... They did uh, Mr. Bratt's origin story. And then in episode 10, they did Slappy's Human Forms origin story. So that is four times. And I can guarantee you guys, in any good show or movie, you do not need four origin stories for four separate characters to have a good show. Like, usually in a regular show, in, like, a good show, there would only be, like, one episode out of 13 where you would get a character's origin and you would slow the whole story down uh, so that you could tell this origin. But in the second half, they really didn't have much to do because they didn't want to adapt the books that they were naming the episodes after. So the final episode... It is called Welcome to Horrorland, and uh, it is not about Horrorland at all. It is about Slappy and his stupid plan to sacrifice a thousand people so that he can bring all the monsters to life from the books or something, and then that will magically make people not fight World War III. So Slappy in this universe, Slappy the Dummy, (laughs) Slappy is an anti-war activist, and he is trying to stop the wars from happening. That is his character. (laughs) That is Slappy the Dummy. (laughs) I mean, how could you defend that? How could you defend... Slappy being an anti-war activist whose whole motivation is because he has PTSD from World War One. <laughs> and he's got, and he's a he's also his character in a stupid origin story. Franz Mahar is like you know you're a magician. And, and and Slappy is like, no, I am not a magician. Magicians stand on the street corner and do tricks for people. I am real. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? What does that even mean? <laughs> I, I am real. I am not a magician. I am real. Like, just, God. Like... <laughs> Oh, God, the people who wrote the show. (laughs) They spend most of the finale revolving the story around the love triangle resolving. And the resolution of the love triangle is by far the worst thing of the whole season. Because also, too, like it's really strange because earlier on in the season... The girly boy, James, he was saying that Isaiah and Margot could never be a thing because uh, they're just in love with the idea of being with each other. But then in the finale, the girly boy, he is encouraging Isaiah to move in on Margot and take advantage of uh, Lucas going back to town and uh, abandoning Margot. So, (laughs) that doesn't make any sense, you know? It's like these characters, they're not real characters. They have, all their actions make no sense at all. 
like him encouraging Isaiah to go after Margot makes zero sense. So then through tricks and through just plot delusion and random bullshit, just complete plot contrivance, they do this stupid story and it ends up to where they undo everything that Slappy ever did. So then Slappy is turned back into a wounded World War I soldier and he shoots Isaiah. And they try to treat it like it's a really sad event, with, which, you know, I was kind of cheering. I was like, yay, one of these shitty characters got what they deserve. Yay! And then he's in the hospital, and Margot says, You broke my heart over and over again. You're a really terrible person, but I love you. And then she brings him back to life, and so it ends with them getting together. Uh, Meanwhile, fuck Lucas. Lucas gets shit. Uh, He gets worms. And uh, then uh, Mr. Brat is now possessed by Slappy. And that is the twist of the season, is that uh, Mr. Brat is being possessed a second time. Uh, out of nowhere. There's no explanation for that or anything. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's just, uh, you know, fuck you. You know, you're going to like it anyway because it's it's goosebumps. And, and it's like, no. <clears throat> this show was atrocious. It was really, really, really bad. I mean, I struggle to even give this show a, a rating in terms of food. Because it is that bad. Safi is going to give her rating in the episode review. Uh, I am going to give my food rating now. I would say that overall the worst episode of the season was Welcome to Horrorland. The finale. Uh, That was just, it it was mind-boggling how bad it was. And the best episode, probably Night of the Living Dummy 1. And then uh, the best kind of adaptation, I guess, like the only one that kind of felt like it was better than the other terrible ones was Go Eat Worms, uh, the one with Lucas and Margot getting together, uh, because I really liked Lucas as an actor, and I felt like he he brought a lot of depth into dim- and dimension into this character who was really trash. And uh, it's just too bad that he didn't have a good script to work with because he really deserved it. So in terms of food, oh, you know, there was this one time, which one should I use? Because I I just said there's this one time and I didn't even think about which one time it was because I just, I hate this show so much. This show makes, it, it's probably one of the shows that has made me the most angriest in, in, in like, all of history. Like, I've just, I've never been this angry before. It is so bad. It was just one big fuck you to Goosebumps fans. And, uh, but, okay. Okay. I'm not going to give it a food review. I am going to give it a review of uh there's this one day in elementary school and I was on the bus in the afternoon and there was this girl who always sat like uh across from me and her name was Kayla and it was her birthday that day and she brought cupcakes to school because it was tradition for anybody who's who had a birthday they had to bring like a treat to school for everyone to to share and so we would have stuff like all the time. <coughs> and Kayla, she brought in these cupcakes and she ate like all of them. She still had some of them left uh, on the bus. Ugh. <coughs> and I see I'm starting to throw up because I can remember the smell of what she did. <coughs> I looked over and it looked like a scene out of a horror movie. Because she had puked this, like, orange tomato soup, like, vomit all over herself, all over her winter coat, all over the the seat, all over the cupcakes. 
all over the floor. Uh, it was so gross. It what there was no chunks. It was just liquid, and uh, <coughs> see, like <coughs> it is hard for me to even get through the story without thr throwing up because I have such a good memory that I can remember that sm <coughs> smell. <laughs> this is really bad, uh, and I was the one who alerted the bus driver. And I woke up Kayla, and she was like, oh, shit. <laughs> she woke up in her own puke, and she was like, oh. And what was really gross was, like, the puke was, like, coming out of her while she was sleeping. <laughs> so she was, like, puking in her sleep, and she was like, ah. It was kind of like those Halloween decorations where the, you have the ghoul who just stands there just throwing up like continuously and and so like the bus driver he had to stop the bus he had to clean all of that up and put us all in a line uh, while he dealt with that and while he you know whenever people would throw up they'd always like sprinkle this white powder all over it that smelled terrible and everything he did all that and he had all these towels like I was surprised that he didn't throw up either like, he must have been used to it at that point. But when we were standing in line, I was holding my Simpsons book bag, and she tur and, and I was kind of laughing at the situation, and Kayla, she turned around and she threw up all over me and the book bag. And, and I, I, well, not really on me, but just really on the book bag, because I shielded it. I held up the book bag, and she just went like, Ugh, uh, 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 and there was, it was everywhere. And, and I was about to throw up, like, I was like vomiting, like, without anything coming out. And I was sitting at the front of the bus, and just, I had all these towels. My book bag was disgusting. And it, it was so gross. And I was the last stop on the bus. So I had to sit there and just just try to not throw up. And he even gave me a trash can. Uh, because he, he saw that I was just about to throw up too. And she was just like sitting in the front really sick. And like that whole experience, that was what the show was like. <clears throat> it's like you look over at those cupcakes that she had I think that they were like vanilla cupcakes which I'm not really much of a fan of vanilla cupcakes but uh, a vanilla cupcake would be a lot better than throw up and so instead of us Goosebumps fans getting to eat those really delicious cupcakes we have to put up with this whole throw up business she pukes everywhere she tries to puke on you <clears throat> I think her puking on you, that's kind of symbolic of like when Slappy comes into the picture and kind of ruins everything, uh, you know, and after Harold leaves the show. So overall, this is a, a ter terrible goosebump show. I would recommend staying the hell away from it and pretending like it doesn't exist uh, and avoiding it like the plague. But I will still say that the first Goosebumps movie is still worse than this show. Uh, the, the, the first Goosebumps movie is that bad. Uh, so anyways, please like this video and comment and tell me what you thought about the season. Uh, and if you hated it any more than I did. And then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to continue seeing more honest Goosebumps reviews. Uh, goodbye, everybody. See you.